growing up outside of the Adirondacks, um, I had the opportunity to see what invasive species do in other places of the state and, and country. And um, Phragmites in particular is one that people see a lot of time growing along the side of the road and they think it's normal, but it's not. Um, up here in the Adirondacks, we have so many wetlands that um, would be devastated by this plant. Um, if we don't do anything about it now, about these small infestations, we're going to lose our chance. I watched Phragmites spread along my route to school. You know, I didn't think anything of it. It's not until now, going back down to that same area, that I realize the impact that it's having in other places and the opportunity that we have here in the Adirondack Park because many of our infestations are still so small and manageable and we have so much more to lose up here if we do nothing because the amount of wetlands that we have up here is um, staggering. We have hundreds of thousands of acres of them and to do nothing about these infestations at this point is just not an option. So talking a little bit about Phragmites ID, um, Phragmites or common reed is a grass. Um, it looks a lot like a grass kind of on steroids. It's not often you see grass growing 12, 15 feet tall, but Phragmites is able to do that. And um, around this time of year, later in the season, it'll have a tassel on the top. Another thing that you can look for for Phragmites is um, obviously its height, but one thing that I always look at is right where the, the leaf attaches to the stem, it's called a ligule and there'll be hairs. Another thing that you can also look for is most grasses here in the park have a joint, which means it's a bulge in the stem that's very pr uh, prominent. Phragmites does not have that. It's a straight shot. Um, looks kind of like a bamboo if you um, look up close because it has these nodes, but it won't have that joint along the stem. So there are a lot of different reasons why it's important we manage Phragmites when we find it on the landscape has a lot of different impacts to the environment and to the economy. So if we find Phragmites growing in a natural wetland, um, it can quickly take over that area and push out a lot of our native species. And it also blocks our nice viewscapes of the natural environment. Phragmites can be introduced and spread along the roadway by mowing through infestations and the movement and use of contaminated fill in construction projects. Once established along the roadway, Phragmites can easily spread into and overtake nearby wetlands. I've worked with the department for 17 years and I've seen invasive plants have a negative impact on our infrastructure with block signage, uh, clogged drainage, and line of sight issues. These impacts have created an increased demand on our resources and our ability to maintain the right of way. It's important for our maintenance staff to think about invasive plants because they can be moved through contaminated fill, our mowing operations, and disturbance from a construction project. There are simple things we can do to limit the spread of invasive plants. Use clean fill when available, mow around infestations, use native plants in our landscaping, and limit the disturbance during and after construction projects. So when we're managing a Phragmites infestation, there are several different treatment methods that we can utilize. Um, if it's a very small infestation, we might use mechanical techniques, that is, just digging the plants up or covering them with a plastic mat that smothers them and blocks the sunlight. But if it's a larger infestation, we need to utilize an herbicide. Um, and we use a couple different techniques for this, a cut and drip and a foliar spray. And it's usually a combination of the two techniques to manage one infestation. So we're just gonna make our way around the perimeter of the site right now, just clearing away the frag, Phragmite stems from any of the native vegetation, and we do that by doing a clip and drip, which is a very selective herbicide treatment technique. Essentially what you do is just clip each individual Phragmite stem down near the base. If you look at this, the stem is hollow on the inside. And what we're able to do using these, these stem injection guns is you just fill up each one of those cavities with a select amount of herbicide. And what happens then is only that individual plant is targeted as opposed to just going in here and doing a, a complete foliar spray of all the vegetation you would get off target impact on these other native species which we definitely want to try and avoid and we want to try and protect these so that when the site is cleared of Phragmites we have that native seed bank and native vegetation that is able to recolonize the once invaded site and um, and really 
you know, do our job for us as far as restoration. So what you have behind me here is a spray lane, and the reason why we, we um, did that was to allow us access into the heart of the infestation. If we didn't create these before going in and trying to do our foliar spray, we'd end up breaking over a lot of stems and we wouldn't be able to treat them effectively. And our goal is to try and treat every single stem that's in this infestation to get the ultimate level of control. When conducting a foliar spray, you're really striving to just get the plants to wet, not to drip. So when Phragmites is growing in a wetland setting like this, the only people that can apply herbicides on these infestations are certified pesticide applicators that are certified in category 3A in New York State. So um, no, not anyone can go in and treat these infestations. It really takes a professional. That being said, in some instances, if there's Phragmites growing on your own property and, and it's in a terrestrial setting or upland setting, you can perform these treatments on your own, although we advise caution and it's always best to reach out to professionals. At least 10% of the landscape is covered by wetlands. Uh, so that would be 600,000 acres in a 6 million acre Adirondack Park. So one of my interests as a professional has been to help to prevent the spread of invasive plant species, in particular um, ones that have the most impact on Adirondack wetlands, like the Phragmites that was prevalent on this site. So in 2010, there were extensive stands of the Phragmites, mainly towards the road where we think it started colonizing this site and invading it. And then there were rhizomes, the underground plant stems, extending out several hundred feet into the wetland. So you can see how far those underground stems extended out at the edge of the wetland. And um, if they were not controlled, plant would consolidate itself and take over all the intervening space in a matter of years. It's kind of scary, isn't it? Worst case scenario is, is that literally almost the entire pond is taken over by Phragmites, and you can see good examples of that in the southern part of New York and New York metropolitan area where hundreds or thousands of acres of wetlands are now nothing but Phragmites. This rush pond does uh, adjoin the, uh, the Northway and most likely it was introduced uh, from somewhere from the roadways a lot of times due to mowing by road crews. Different species all require different types of habitat and depend on different you know plants to survive both for nesting and for food source so if you have a monoculture with basically just one species like Phragmites pretty much all of the native animals and plants would essentially no longer have a home. So it's been about a year since we've treated our site and as you can see the plants behind me are pretty dead. And the next step in the management process is to go in and mow down all this dead standing plant material and we're going to do that using a brush cutter and this will provide two benefits for the site. First it will aid in the decomposition of the plant material and expedite the process of native plants coming back into the area. And it'll also make it a lot easier for us to treat any small um, re-sprouts of Phragmites that might still be present at the site. So now that we've mowed down all the dead standing plant material and opened up the canopy, you can see we have a few stems of Phragmites left at the site. So what we'll do is follow this up with a foliar spray application of glyphosate-based herbicide to get rid of all of those small plants. For a Phragmites infestation of this size, usually it'll take three to five years of consecutive treatments in order to get rid of all the invasive plant material at the site. So obviously the goal of invasive plant control isn't to just remove the invasive species, it's also to facilitate native species reestablishing and recolonizing the once invaded site. In this particular instance, we already have that happening even just a year after treatment. Even amongst the dead stems of Phragmites, we have sensitive fern, as well as moss, some young raspberries, and even St. John's wort and other native species that are going to recolonize the site. And over the coming years, this entire site will look uh, much like this to the point where you won't even know that Phragmites was ever here. And as these native species recover, these native plants, eventually the wildlife that rely on them will come back as well.